Welcome to Electro Online. In the previous video, we left off where the nuclear, the core of the star, had collapsed into a nuclear ball with a density of about 2 times 10 to the 17 kilogram per cubic meter. But we should mention a few more steps before that. Some very important steps that happen in a very short amount of time. All right, what happens next? Well, we have what we call neutronization. In other words, the protons and the electrons, because the enormous density, are being pushed together into a, into a little neutron, and as a result, a neutrino gets expelled. Remember, those neutrinos those are very, very light particles that travel at near the speed of light that are continuously being expelled by all the stars because of the nuclear fusion process, and they're currently going through your body as well as mine, as well as the entire Earth, continuously, thousands of them every second unknown to us because they normally don't interact with matter because matter is not so dense, lots of empty spaces between the nuclei of matter and so therefore these are the particles that are, that are normally being produced but in the case of a collapse of a nucleus of a giant star in enormous quantities of these neutrinos are, are produced very very quickly by pushing all the protons and electrons together turning them into neutrons the whole core becomes a nuclear ball of neutrons initially with a density of 10 to the 12 kilograms per cubic meter. So we're stepping backwards just a little bit in time, a small fraction of a second, to show you what happens in those few moments until the whole core becomes a ball of nuclear material, primarily neutrons, at a density of 10 to the 17 kilograms per cubic meter. So at this moment, those neutrinos escape the core. Now the core is very dense, not all of them escape, but the vast majority escape out of the core in just a matter of seconds because they move at the speed of light. About 99% of all the energy formed in that giant collapse and explosion of a type 2 supernova is carried away by the neutrinos. It's the neutrinos that carry the vast amount of that energy away from the star. And the vast majority of the neutrinos make it through the star unhindered and move on to be detected far, far away. Now, the typical energy of a neutrino generated during the collapse of a, of a star, of the core of a star, where protons and electrons are combined into neutrons, is about 10 to 30 million electron volts per neutrino, which is a lot of energy for a neutrino. The total energy for a typical supernova is about 2.2 times 10 to the 46 joules. That's an enormous amount of energy. That is more energy than the sun produces in its entire lifespan, many times that amount of energy. Converted to a million electron volts is about 1.4 times 10 to 59 electron volts. So we can calculate that seven, about 7 times 10 to the 51 neutrinos are being formed in that very, very tiny amount of time, very short fraction of a second. This, these neutrinos then move out of the star, move in all directions, and from a distance, like the Earth, we can actually see that flash of neutrinos. Now, in 1987, we had a supernova explosion, not quite the very same type, it was a slightly different type, in the Large Magellanic Cloud, one of the companion galaxies of the Milky Way galaxy. And we saw a flash of neutrinos over a period of about 12 seconds, in both the Kamiakande uh, detector and the IMB detector. The Kamiakande is a big detector in Japan. 12 neutrinos were detected in the Kamiakande and 8 neutrinos were detected in the IMB. That is enormous, an enormous number. Now you may say, well, that's not very much. Well, it turns out that typically in a given day, only one or two neutrinos are detected over the period of an entire day. So when 12 in one and 8 in the other were detected within a 12 second period, that's called a massive onslaught of neutrinos. The reason why is we only detect a very, very tiny percentage, a very tiny percentage of all the neutrinos that rushed past us. So an enormous quantity trillions upon trillions of neutrinos pass by us in a, in a given moment and we detected a total of 20 of those which is a large amount that was about three hours before we saw the light flash because the explosion can then be seen in the visible light but there was about a three hour lag between them so all that happens in that very small amount of time when the core collapses when protons are, and electrons are converted into neutrons that also produces the neutrinos. Those neutrinos go streaming out of the star. They go through the galaxy onto the next galaxy at the speed of light, 
we've detected that of that particular supernova, 1987A, and so then what happens next? And what happens next is dependent upon not all neutrinos getting out, a small portion of them is what causes the supernova explosion and what gives the energy to create all the other elements on the periodic table that are produced in the supernova explosion. So let me explain that in the next video when we continue with this fascinating story of the final moments of a supernova or a dying massive star if you want to call that. More cliffhanger? Another cliffhanger. Stay tuned, same channel, same time next week or in the next video in this case.